Welcome to the latest Pinnacle Forum podcast on stewarding the influence that God has given you. This is a series of conversations with leaders who happen to be Christians. Many are fellow partners and are also currently involved in one of our forums. As leaders in our fields, we gain influence. We may think that our influence came because of our intellect, our looks, our luck, our personality, and it's for our own use. The reality is that God grants this for us to use in the advancement of his kingdom. These are the stories of people who are learning how to use that God-given influence in service to others and ultimately to God. We trust these will encourage you as you steward your own God-given influence. Now on to our discussion. All right, so let's start with you, Tom McNamara. How do you specifically engage with the generations that aren't your generation? So, you know, you still got exposure to people. There's still people from the silent generation that are out there in the workforce or certainly in on church boards and committees. How do you specifically engage with the ones that are older and the ones that are younger? I think the ones that are older are just easier for me to understand and relate to, right? Because we have a lot of common experiences. We've We've been through seasons of life that include trials and joys and successes and failures. And so we have sort of that shared experience to uh, guide our conversations and, and have like common ground to talk about. Right. So the younger generation, though, is really much harder for me to connect with. Why is that? Because they don't think like I do. Some of the ones I mean, I'm in software. Right. So the, I work with a lot of introverts. And so they don't just don't open up a whole lot. And so what I have found is it takes a lot of conversations, just friendly conversations. Hi, how are you doing? You know, how was your holiday weekend? You going out to dinner this weekend somewhere? You know, if they spent time with their friends, just, you know, ask them how that time went, whatever. And you after you do that for a while, they'll start to talk to you about things that are deeper. Right. Like I had a guy share with me today that his mother-in-law has cancer. And, you know, people don't share those things with you if there's not a relationship there and trust. And so that's one of the things I have realized. It just takes time and you have to cause and create and engage in the dialogue. But then the other thing is just timing. Uh, my wife and I talk about that a whole lot. It, like with this generation, it just there are there are going to be times where they will be open and vulnerable, and you have to recognize those opportunities and be you have to have the relationship and be there to engage with them when those times come and not try to push things on them. Sabrina, go ahead. Um, one of the things that stands out to me in just being able to reach across differences, you know, in, in people, everybody's different, right? You know, just because I am a black woman who's in my forties doesn't mean I think like every other black woman in their forties, you know? So I find it important to really understand that there's not a one size fits all formula for any situation when you're interacting with people. I know some millennials that love texting. I love some that hate texting. And it just shocked me. I was like, oh, I didn't know that. I just assumed because <laughs> you grew up with this technology, it'd be much easier for you. You know, but that's those things really help me to understand different perspectives. And I want to go back to, you know, what some of the others were saying about honor and respect and just really coming with just the power of the Holy Spirit when you're interacting with people and really not trying to put the same blanket on everyone. I think that's important. We're trying to reach across. Very wise words. And, and I was going to say, going back to you, Tom McNamara, one of the things that we have seen is that there's food is an interest to anybody. And most millennials, younger millennials, uh, didn't grow up in households where there was a lot of home cooked meals because both mom and dad were working, they were gone all the time, which is why they're tired. They saw how insignificant that was because mom and dad were gone all the time. So that's why they want significance in their work. But food is important to them. And one of the things that Martha and I have seen as we've worked with multiple generations is that one of the most powerful things you can do with your workplace people is to have a meal with them outside of work. If it's not appropriate to do it in your home, then 
take everybody out to a, a good family cooked restaurant kind of a thing where you can actually have a conversation. But if you can get them in your home, it's the most disarming, most loving thing you can do for them. That's obviously if they're in your same town, because obviously we all work with people across the country today. But having a meal with somebody breaks down a lot of barriers and good cook, home cooked meals. Most people in the younger generations haven't had a lot of that. And they also, if you invite them over earlier, they might want to learn how to cook what you're cooking because they didn't ever get taught how to cook what you're cooking. And we saw that with our kids, friends, when the, our kids were in high school, they wanted to come over and they wanted you to see what we we're cooking because they didn't ever see their mom or dad cooking. Yeah. They just saw them something in the microwave. And that's something we call you. Yeah. Food. Food is the universal message of love. Absolutely. God put food at the center of our hearts. Deb, what about you? How do you purposely engage with generations that aren't yours? I initiate the conversation. And I love what Tom said about the need for frequency and consistency of touches. So just showing that you care by asking questions, following up on things they've told you. But I will invite people to go for a walk. I'll invite them to a Zoom call just to get to know each other. I will invite them to, into my kitchen, yes, to make caramels or make sourdough bread. I will look for any point of connection that's important to the other person and then exhaust that topic. Oh, tell me, what do you do? How do you do that? And what, where have you found success? And so I'm learning from them and I'm showing that I want to learn from them. And that opens the door wide. We're heading into Christmas season. Christmas cookies, huge, huge thing to do. Thanksgiving meals, too many people don't have family to have Thanksgiving with or their family gatherings are a little awkward. There's a lot of movies about that. Uh, so I, I was trying to think of one, but there's so many awkward family Thanksgivings. Have them over, invite them for Thanksgiving. People, I mean, we have a four day weekend, almost all of us. Thanks. Invite some people over. Let them know that they're loved and part of your family. All right. I'm going to go back to you, Connor, because you're going to have a different perspective than all of us. How do you specifically engage, intentionally engage with people that aren't your generation? I, I think I'm a little bit unique. I don't know if I am the appropriate person to to answer this question. I've always been an old soul. I always wanted to hang out with the adults. I preferred to hanging out with the adults. M my friends' parents and my girlfriend's parents always liked me more than I think my friends or girlfriends ever liked me. So I, I, I've just always enjoyed being around. I love sitting with my grandparents and hearing their stories. And that's just kind of the way I've been wired. So I, again, I'm, I, I'm probably not the typical uh, millennial in that sense. AJ, why don't you help us out then? Be, be a typical millennial for us. How do you, how do you, you got to help me out. How do you intentionally engage with generations that aren't yours? So, you know, I think honestly for me, it's a lot of, of what some of the other folks have said, had said is just, you know, I try to be respectful to them. I try, you know, because I do want them to feel like I, I care about what they say. Even if I don't necessarily agree with what they're saying, I, I, you know, I'm still like, you know, thank you for your thoughts and thank you for taking the time. But generally speaking, just from a logistics perspective, I almost always try to engage them either on a, you know, a video phone call or, a, or in person if I can. Just because, you know, texting, as we've already said, it's just so impersonal. And even even within people of my own generation, but certainly to generations that are, you know, chronologically superior. I feel like most of the time they just would look at that as like, wow, you know, what a lazy kid who doesn't, you know, who doesn't want to take the time to actually talk to me. So that's, I think, one of the things that and that was kind of beaten into me, too, as a kid was just, you know, look people in the eye and, and, you know, really engage with them. And so I think that's unfortunately kind of like Connor. I'm, you know, I'm an old soul, too. I, I'm sort of the top end of the millennials. I'm 38. So I think I probably have a different perspective than, say, a, a 30 year old now or even a, a late 20s uh, from that, you know, from that perspective. Before we go to our last question, before we open up for a form of open questions, how many of you have a mentor in your life right now? Mm, OK. And how many of you have a mentee in your life right now? Somebody you're mentoring. All right, so there's room for improvement for all of us because even if you're in your 60s or 70s, there's still somebody older than you that could pour their life into you. They may not 
They may be stuck in a nursing home. They may be stuck in in an assisted living community. Uh, They may be stuck at home, but there's somebody that can pour their life into you. We all need to have a Paul as long as we can. I understand at some point in time, we run out of people that are older than us who have been walking the, the distance longer than us. And then the mentoring thing, if you don't have somebody you're pouring your life into, it will stunt your spiritual growth. Because as we grow f- way faster when we're pouring our lives into others, it just happens that way. Last question. What do you value from generations that aren't your generation? So I'm going to start with you, Deb. What do you value from generations that aren't yours? And let's just go down, down generation. What do you value from those generations that are younger than you? I love the enthusiastic approach to life, the wide eyes, the the. Uh, they're still exploring, they're they're looking, they're seeking. And that gives me life to see that in others. Okay, Tom McNamara, what do you value from generations younger than you? I see a patience that they're not in a rush to get anywhere, mm. to do anything. You know, it's like we were talking about the minimalists and that sort of thing. There's just there's not a rush to achieve or to acquire or to, they're just kind of happy to go with life as it comes at them. And I like that attitude. I love that. Sabrina. Their energy and excitement and also their willingness to be vulnerable and open and to not carry the mask that most of us chronologically <laughs> superior, you know, have have been so it's like it was attached to our faces to pretend to be perfect. So I love that they're they've unmasked themselves. Yeah, there's no question that all of us that are older need to work on taking off the mask and peeling back the layers of the onion uh, or the ogre, whichever you want to look at it, and and really be who we are because everybody can learn from us that is younger than us because they can learn from our mistakes, but not if we're faking it. If we're faking it, we're not benefiting anybody. And it's not really benefiting our faith. Connor, you being the young guy, give us your perspective on what you value from generations that are older than you. Experience and wisdom. Uh, just uh, people that, you know, have, have been there, done that, that can, can, I think that's one of the reasons we we brought the wise owl role into our wise self forms was to benefit from that wisdom and experience. I've avoided so many pitfalls in life because I've had so many, like Deb said, I got to figure out everything the hard way. It's been a pretty easy life because I have been, I, I was blessed with two, you know, really great things and they're named mom and dad. And they were able to, to give me a great life and uh, a lot of wisdom. And then I got blessed even more by um, having the ability to connect with people that are older than me and, and learn from them. And, um, I think that's, you know, wisdom and experience and wisdom through experience is the the greatest thing I think I can get from an older generation. Just a phenomenal a summary of all things generational. I, I think we've got way more in common throughout the generations than we have not in common as once we start to understand how we come from different perspectives. Because when you realize why certain generations are the way they are, all of a sudden it's easier to understand them. And as I always tell people, listen, if people don't know me, they think I'm offensive. Once they get to know my heart, they realize I'm really a pretty deep lover. I just am intense. And I also enjoy the occasional Mountain Dew from Casey's. Uh, that's a free commercial for Casey's in case you've got a, a gas station near you. But it's really helping people to understand who you are and then having that conversation. And we will benefit. I mean, Paul the Apostle was the greatest example of this. He surrounded himself with people that are older than him, people that are younger than him, and he appreciated and worked with all of them. What kind of questions, is there any question you'd like us to discuss as a small group? We have a small group today. Any questions you'd like to put out for us to to bounce back and forth? Anybody got a question or a comment? Either way. Communication methods, because I'm the telephone generation with the OS 51455 dial, right? And so when someone sends me a text and it requires a conversation, so it's not just exchanging facts, I want to pick up the phone and call. And I was told that's rude because your call is an interruption. So what am I supposed to do? Do I make an appointment via text? 
to be able to call you? <laughs> somebody younger than Deb, please answer that question. I see no issue with you just picking up the phone and calling somebody at all. I think that's, forgive me if this is a child of yours uh, that is giving you this feedback. Uh, no, it is. That, You're good. Uh, that, that it's, um, that's just silly. You know, we're all, we're all, we are still adults. Candace, you got a different perspective than that? I do. <laughs> one, of, one of the things that I, I've done with, with people is I'll text them, hey, can we get on a call at three o'clock? Because that shows that you're honoring their time. You know, maybe they're in a meeting, maybe they're pressed. They've got something that, you know, that they've got to kind of work through. So, yeah, sometimes it may feel like an interruption only because you're just doing 10 billion things. But I, that's the way I handle it. I'm usually like, hey, and, and it, it's like it, it honors them to show that I respect the fact that you're a busy person. But when you're available, does this time work for you? And I usually do like a 10 and 2, give them some options. That that has helped me. But what's funny, though, is they've already interrupted you. So if they take offense to you interrupting them, you're like, wait a minute. But you just interrupted me by sending me a text message. I mean, so that's the mentality. I, I get it with Deb because I'm like, I'm, I'm picking up the phone. I'm not, or what I've learned is to, I have an iPhone. I've learned to talk to text. And so I just bombard them with sentences and paragraphs. And then they pick up and they're like, I'm not going to read all that. Can we just talk, please? So that's another way to overcome that. Candace, what about you? If if you text Deb to ask her a question and she calls you back, are you picking it up? Or are you going to say, hey, I'm too busy? I'm going to pick it up. I think the phone call is great. I agree with Connor. I mean, I, I think there's some value to, you know, try to schedule an appointment, but it really depends on the situation. But I just pick up the phone. <laughs> AJ, I know you're 38 because so old. What different perspective on that? No, I mean, I think it just it depends on on who you're talking to and what the intent is. If it's something for business, then I think, you know, Sabrina, what you said, you know, that's perfect. You know, like, let's yeah, let's schedule a time and let's chat. But at least for me personally, I really hate talking on the phone. I really don't like it. I, I never have, you know, mm -hmm. and usually when I, when I call someone or I get a call from someone, it's about something specific and we cover that and like, cool, thanks. Bye. You know, but if it's just something that you want to like, you want to catch up or you want to get to know a person better, usually then I'll say, Hey, you know, are you free for coffee on Saturday or, you know, something like that so that we can actually get together and talk. And because I, I don't know, just, I, I don't find catching up conversations to be quite as meaningful personally over the phone as I do, you know, in person. So, and that is a man perspective. It's also how we approach shopping. Sure. We go, we get it done. We kill, we eat and we leave kind of thing. It's, yeah. that's a, that's a yeah. man approach. You're right. It's, it really is. I'll, I'll say a masculine approach versus the, the feminine approach for sure. Yeah. But we can learn from our fellow neighbors who happen to be <laughs> female because uh, they, yeah, it's just one of those things, but just want to put my perspective on that one because it's fun and we're getting close to the end of our hour. Any other questions or things that you want to make sure we talk about? I know we've scheduled an hour and a half, but you don't have to use it all if you don't need it. Is there anything else that you had in your heart? You're like, I really wanted to learn this today. I want to ask this question. So Jim, you know, I was obviously not in that earlier meeting, but I was totally shocked and surprised to hear that these, these younger generation would want the mentorship. They would want the company. They would want the attention. So what, what was the takeaway on their end in terms of what, we, what were the suggestions given to them on how to enable that, how to make that happen? You know, we're you kind of got to be the master of your own destiny. And if that's if you're needing something, if there's a gap in your life, you've got to seek it. And so whether that's reaching out to, you know, or why sellers reaching out to me or Chuck or whoever and saying, hey, I need somebody in you know Phoenix that I'm looking to be a mentor of mine for me. And we've had guys do that um, and, and made that happen. So, you know, taking some responsibility. Uh, yeah, exactly. And we also added in that, you know, to pray about it. It's like maybe there's somebody in your current life. That, AJ in the chat, re he reached out to me and his mentor is actually through Pinnacle Forum. So, you know, it's just, you, you kind of got to take, take responsibility for mentorship and I think some people are honestly honored, you know, if you there's a young person you have a relationship with and you ask them, you know, would you be interested? I, I think first the, the relationship needs to be there. Mm -hmm. um, it could be presumptuous, but I think, you know, asking somebody, you know, do you have an interest in, you know, a, a formal, more, more formal mentor mentee relationship? I think young people be honored to say that. And we dealt with that question also this morning in the fact that most of us, 
would never make have that conversation like Connor just suggested because we don't see that. Do we really have anything of value? Why would we say, hey, you know, I could really benefit you if I poured my life into yours? That just seems a little not like our generations, which is why we encouraged um, one of the younger generations to just reach out to us and say, hey, I see value in you. Is, can I walk through life with you? Here's what I'm looking for. Uh, because I think it's uh, it would take the very bold person to say, hey, I could mentor you. You could use my help. <laughs> you know, sometimes there's that fear of rejection because sometimes we have this perception. Again, we're perceiving what we think about a generation that's different from ours. So sometimes we can perceive that maybe they're, the generations are not interested and you think that they're just young and dumb <laughs> and lazy and, you know, what have you. So there is that fear of rejection that comes. Um, one of the tips that I did here was that if that um, younger person is specific about what they're looking for mentorship for and they give a, like a clear timeline or how often, you know, all of that, that would really be helpful as well because most of the older generation, you're busy. You've got life going on. <laughs> you've got things you have to sit around waiting for a mentee. So that was another thing that we said that would be a helpful tip for the bold ones. Jeff, does that answer your question? Yeah, just something to add that that didn't come up earlier. It doesn't always have to be this long-term commitment. If someone were to come to me and say, Deb, I'm thinking about getting into coaching. Can I take you to lunch and pick your brain? Absolutely. And maybe that conversation leads to something more regular, more frequent, but there are so many opportunities to learn from one another simply because of our area of expertise. And if someone would ask me that question and say, just like I said, that's a no brainer for me. Yeah, get your calendar out. Let's figure out when we both are free. Free food is always good anyway, if someone's gonna buy you lunch. Right? Any other comments on that? How do you approach a mentor? Go ahead, Chuck. I think it takes a little bit of discernment. We live in a culture where the president is 80-something, and we've got senators from California who are 80-something. The discernment needs to come in. When do? Please don't make me feel like you just wish I'd get out of the way so you could take my spot. Right? But at the same time, I have to know myself well enough to know that my days of passing on wisdom may be kind of behind me. I may have anecdotal stories, but I've got dementia. And <laughs> I don't have dementia, by the way, not yet. Well, maybe the beginnings of it. But, you know, I think we live in a culture that says you old people over 55 need to retire and get out of the way. And I don't see that here, but I see that among the people that want to run for office that are 22 years old, the people that got out of college that want to, uh, they want everything and they want it right now. I think you need to acknowledge that I'm not quite dead yet. Um, and we do have some things to offer and that if you'll ask for them and pursue them, you know, if you ask me once, it's probably not going to happen. If you come back and ask me again or again, it probably got a better chance of happening. And then if you take my advice or at least you acknowledge that that's pretty good advice and go out and live it and then come back and report, you're going to have a better chance of having an interaction with me than if you come and get an opinion from me and then go out and do the exact opposite. So respect the information that you get uh, and pursue it like you really want it. Mm. Uh, That would be my message to the chronologically inferior. One of the things we talk about on I Work For Him all the time is that retirement has three stages. There's that really active stage, 65 to 75. There's that This time between 75 and 85, where you really have the ability to pour wisdom into people, but maybe not run anymore. And then from 85 to 95, where you're really passing on your wisdom and your assets uh, to the next generation and and to recognize that there's different stages. But as long as we have our mind, we have the ability to encourage those younger than us. And and we talk about all the time on I Retire From, my co-host is 82 and he's just still working a full-time job, but to recognize that we have those different stages in life. And you know, I didn't, I shared this earlier on the YSL meeting is I didn't ever get a chance to know either of my grandfathers. I would have really loved to have had uh, some time with my grandfathers, but I got to know Martha's grandfather was a godly man. And that 
was super impactful in my life. I, I challenge you, those of you who are chronologically inferior, if you still got grandparents around, get to know them because they, they've been through stuff and they also have a familial understanding that you can't get from anybody else. Any other questions, things you want to make sure we talk about before we go? Go ahead. Just one thing real quick on the mentorship thing. Um, <clears throat> I would also say, you know, it doesn't, uh, your mentee doesn't necessarily have to be younger than you either. There's actually a lot of guys that I, so I mentor every week at the house of refuge here in Phoenix. And many of the guys that I mentor are much older than me, you know, but I'm more, I'll say spiritually mature than they are. And, and obviously they, you know, a lot of these guys coming out of drug addiction and all that kind of stuff. And they, they have the minds of 20 year olds, you know, they just don't, you know? And so I, I would say, for those of you, one, for those of you who don't have a mentee, I really recommend you get one. That's just really amazing. But two, you know, don't be, don't be shocked if that mentee is potentially older than you. That's a good word. Very good word. It really has to do with spiritual perspective. I'm not, I'm not totally convinced on the uh, uh, superior and inferior, uh, totally sold on, on that verbiage. As somebody once said to me, being older is not a personality defect. Uh, I don't think saying older versus younger is uh, is an issue at all. Just but call it call, when, when you walk into the kitchen for Thanksgiving and say, "Hey, mom, how's my older mom doing?" and just see if she smacks <laughs> you with a turkey leg or not. Uh, you're you're right. It, they're just words, and I like to play on it because it gets people's attention. You're right, Connor. Most people don't take offense. I recognize I'm 57. I'm older than you. I, I get it. I can't do fact. anything about it. That's right. I can't pure do fact. anything about it. That's right. Pure fact. Any other questions, things that you really want to make sure we talked about as we connect really conversations between the generations, because we want to foment these conversations in order to impact the kingdom more effectively in the marketplace. And, and we need to be the demonstrators. We need to be the facilitators. We need to be the instigators to get this going. You guys all participated. You chose to participate. Any last comments or questions? Thank you all for being a part of this discussion. Thank you. Yeah, it was it was great. I appreciate all of you. Well, I'm going to close this out then unless well, good. Sabrina, what were you going to say? Deborah raised her hand. <laughs> oh, she, but I didn't see it on the screen, so I didn't. I'm sorry. sorry. She, 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 sorry. She, no, she it. raised her actual hand. I missed I it. Know. Deb. I'm sorry. Deb. Kind of old school. <laughs> sorry, I'm like looking for the hand button. Oh, Deborah, I would just caution any of us that are older to make sure that we, our conversation with the younger generation never is uh, an approach of being jaded. Life is difficult and where we go through hard knocks and we come out battered, bruised, but always to make sure that we're focused on never taking and giving that advice or offering that wisdom from a jaded point of view. Young people don't want to hear it and they sniff it out and they'll shut you down very quickly. So stay tender hearted and soft. Any final comments from our, from our panelists, Connor, any final words? No, thank you. Deb, Deb any final words? So a theme that hasn't really been called forth, uh, I'm going to say it now. We need to look at each person as an individual, forget about their age, connect with them in ways that they want to connect use the methods they want to use, even if it's not our comfort zone. And that will open the door for us to be able to have meaningful relationships. Very good word. Tom McNamara, any final words, thoughts? I'll give thumbs up to what Deb just shared. I think as an older generation, we have to take a step forward towards them. And that will earn some credibility and respect. Mm -hmm. Very good. Sabrina, any final thoughts? I like what Tom said about street cred. <laughs> it gives you street cred when you're, when you're making steps towards that showing that you're vulnerable and you're willing to make a step. That's That does speak volumes. Yeah. Thank you. Devin. Well, this is likely going to be a conversation that is watched many, many times uh, on uh, by other Pinnacle formers as they couldn't be here today, but they're going to enjoy this conversation guaranteed. Make sure you tell your friends that weren't here today in your own form how valuable this conversation was because it really was. I'm just going to close this in prayer and we'll be done. Father, I just thank you for this conversation. Lord, help us to be aware of the people around us, not to be so much in a hurry that we miss them. Uh, Lord, help us to be aware of the best way to communicate with them based on how you created them. 
And, and Lord, give us wisdom to know how to connect our generation so that we can march as one in our workplaces, in the rescue and the redemption of our country by working together throughout the generations, no matter what our workplace looks like. Thank you for each one here. Give them the ability to just be a bright light in their workplace today. And we ask this in Jesus' name. Amen. Amen.